So hopefully you should be able to see my screen now. Yeah, brilliant. So I'm 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 uh, feeling the pressure actually because you you sort of big me up very nicely there, which is like oh, <laughs> particularly when you say oh death by PowerPoint. I said how many slides have I got? Oh, <laughs> so we, we've got I've got about twenty slides. Um, so I'm, I'm hopefully that will that will fill the hour for us or so. But what would be really um, good for me is if we could have a conversation around them. Um, so w when I spoke to Luke initially, uh, we were sort of having a say, do you think people would be happy to have a conversation? And he said, oh, absolutely. So, um, you know, it'd really uh, be great to get your views as well and, and just share some of my experiences around supporting people go through dramatic and substantial change. Um, so part of um, one of the, uh, the roles I have is uh, supporting people with cancer and particularly um, you know, post-treatment um, as they sort of come back into uh, the, the world from this dramatic and really uh, unwanted event that's happened in their lives. One of my roles is to support people sort of live with and beyond and make the adaptions, uh, adapt, adaptations sorry, to those changes that have happened to them. And um, that's the theme that I'm gonna sort of talk about today about some of the, some of the ways in which we support people to do that. Um, I, I work as a coach and, and as a mentor um, and be very happy to sort of kind of continue the conversations. I've got my LinkedIn details there as well if, if people want to connect with me. So that, that'd be, be, be great as well. And I've got, I've got control, haven't I? So I can do that. So the, um, the pandemic um, feels a bit to me like one of those moments where you don't quite know what's going to happen next. And, you know, there's lots of those times in history, isn't there, when these things happen? Um, you know, the, inter the you know, in my lifetime, the internet, uh, social media, you know, who, who knew what genie was going to be let out of the box when all that started happening? Um, you know, but one of the big ones in history, I guess, is the printing press. You know, you know, in terms of, you know, once that had been sort of established and the printing press had been made, who could have predicted um, how knowledge would be transferred around the world and the power of, of that, um, that printing press to share and, and help people develop and, and grow? And you know, probably not so good things happened around this as well. Um, but it feels to me that you know, COVID is kind of one of those moments where we don't quite know what's going to happen next. Does, how does does that make sense to you guys? How, how does that feel? I think it definitely does. Yeah, and there's obviously a huge question mark now as well about what what the new everyone keeps talking about the new normal, don't they? And what that's going to be. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's sort of interesting, isn't it? Because um, what is the new normal? You know, we don't know yet. And how will we know when we get there? Um, you know, it's, it's like when my kids are little, you know, they're always asking when we used to go on long, uh, dr you know, drives and things, but, you know, are we there yet? And so how will we know when we're there? Um, you know, in creating this new normal is also kind of an interesting thing to, to, to be. So I, I just wanted to share a, a model that we work with when we're working with people through change. So some of you may have seen something like this before, um, but there's kind of three big areas of you know, these transitions that, we're, that, that are going on. Um, and I think it's kind of interesting because uh, what does transition mean in, the, in this regard? Because uh, you know, like a change is something that happens. It can be something hap that has happened to us, which we're not in control of, um, COVID, uh, or it could be something that I want to change myself. So it can be external, it can be internal. Um, and the transition in this um, sort of perspective is that's the integration of that change. So it's now I'm able to sort of move on and you know, enter the new normal, as you were saying, Luke. And I think there's kind of three areas that we can start to think about. Um, so there's the ending, uh, you know, which uh, often people talk about, uh, you know, in the, um, you know, the shock, the denial, the, you know, the, the, that sense of loss that it's no longer what it, it, it used to be. Um, and, and that hurts sometimes. That's a physical pain. Um, you know, it's something that we don't want to happen and we don't want these changes to occur. So, you know, sometimes we, we, we can get a bit low about that. We might try and barter, but it takes a little bit of time for us to sort of come to that place of acceptance where we can sort of move on which is great, but then you, you were sort of in this uh, neutral zone, um, as, as, as these people used to call it, which is, you know, it's a bit disorientated. We don't quite know what's going to happen. We don't quite know um, what this new normal is going to look like. 
Um, you know, and it's a bit frustrating because we can't get on with the way things used to be, but we can't get on with the way things are going to be. Uh, and people sort of call this place that, you know, it's a bit like chaos. You know, it's, it's you know, we're really uncertain of what's happening. And then as the new beginnings emerge, you know, that's when we get empowered, we can maybe get a little bit more, com you know, co co uh, committed to the new normal. Um, um, you know, we become more energized, we get excited. It's kind of like we get back on track and, and start to live again, if that make, makes sense. Um, and, and it looks really simple, doesn't it? There's three phases and where are we on this? Um, but in my experience, and it'd be interesting to hear your experience too, is, is often these things aren't really strict boundaries. They sort of overlap each other and there's lots of things that are going on and there may be multiple changes that are overlaid. Um, and, and so it's how do we sort of move through these, these phases and adapt to that, those new realities. D does that make sense? Does that, is that if, uh, where, where are we now for you, uh, you know, in, with COVID for you guys? Where would you say we are? I think it's, I think um, it's, it's really interesting because we could be in all, in all three for in different ways, couldn't we? I, mean, um, I think probably the neutral Mm. Bit, I think because that initial shock is, is likely gone because many of us are now sort of adapted to this way of living um, but it's still obviously very confusing and frustrating yeah I think I would say I think I would say uh, neutral I think neutral. Katie's got, got her hand up what do you think Katie? I, th I think um, like personally I think it's neutral going into beginnings because um, after having had my first vaccine, I am also have a lot going on in my, per in my life at the moment with uh, running for counsellor and, um, you know, I I'm also looking to start a degree in September. So for me, there's definitely, it's, it's neutral going into beginnings. You know, I've gone back to college on campus so it's it's definitely for me there's a lot of excitement and a lot of you know commitment and um it's an excitement definitely so um yeah for me i think it's definitely further along the cycle yeah great. thank you what's it like back on campus at the moment you're back on campus at the moment it must be very odd i can imagine can we raise yeah your hands here? Can you raise your hands it, it is really really odd i mean i'm doing a i'm i'm, I'm doing counseling at the moment going on to doing my degree in september so um this is really interesting to me anyway but yes it's it's really weird yeah. being, being back at, at college i can imagine thank you uh, there's another point there just coming through I, I... yeah so that was me i was um i was just saying um i mean i'm i'm sort of in the middle but i'm quite impatient right now because um uh, you know, we, we don't, don't quite have the all clear yet to get back to normal, but, you know, all sort of hanging around uh, waiting before we can see each other again. And um, I mean, you know, it's uh, I, I mean, Jonathan has uh, been working from home for a year, haven't you? Um, but you're not keen to get back to the office, are you? Um, so, you know, where do we go from here? It's a big question mark. Um, I, I work from home anyway, so it's not really going to affect me that way. But, um, you know, it'd be, be great to get out there and see everybody again and actually meet face to face, like you say. You know, can't wait for that to happen. Yeah, thank you. A a absolutely. But also, I think psychologically, I the the so um, the vaccine rollout is quite empowering because we're actually moving somewhere. There's a bit of energy in society. I think for countries where you know the the, the, vac you know, the infection is going really high and the vaccine is going really slow, you will still sort of have to sit in a neutral frustration or even a you know a sort of fear at the beginning. But I think the fact that the country's got movement. It is in some way sort of quite energizing for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Other thoughts? I think it's quite different for everybody, isn't it? I think people are in different stages and that's perfectly fine. Some people feel excited, some people don't. Some people feel more fears, which have been the endings. So, yeah, I think everybody feels differently, I guess. Yeah. And, for, and for many, this time is that is being enjoyable for for some. The 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 more the the routine, the the 
for many people, this is easier than face to face as well. So yeah, lots of different emotions. I can see Andrea's got her her hand up. Yeah, I think um, for me, um, it rings true what Andrew's been saying because I think in in inwardly as well, psychologically, um, it's it's almost like when you create, you know, you you if you have bad habits and you want to um, sort of make good habits then it takes time in order to do that, to be able to get a different routine going. And I think with, the, you know, so many transitions that have gone on over the year, if you've been shielding, if yeah. you've, uh, you know, sort of had um, changes of work, stuff like that, all of you routines and all of you sort of habits uh, sort of um, change dramatically. And so it takes a lot of time in order to become comfortable or you know able to do those uh, new ways of working or new ways of doing things so yeah I think it's still neutral and I think people are still sort of um, I think more optimistic but still very wary of you know where we are at the moment yeah thanks yeah thank you it's it's so just to reflect back it's kind of interesting isn't it because we're all probably doing this on our own speed and at our own rate, depending on what's going on in our world. Um, but, you know, kind of lockdown is kind of in many ways that, you know, the new normal and we're coming out of lockdown is another change, isn't it? But, you know, we're sort of um, having to sort of readjust again. And, you know, we, you know, we work, I, I work with a lot of people who are shielding because they've got low immune uh, systems and it's a big thing, you know, you know, do I go outside and, and, and risk it with, with people? Because actually the consequences of, of, of me getting it for, the, for these individuals might be, you know, a lot greater than others. And people don't realise that when they're interacting. So, that, you know, these changes are happening all the time. And, uh, and I thought this is just interesting, just to have a, you know, a, a touch base or a, a little bit of a framework to think about, well, where am I today? And, you know, and how can I help myself and support myself get more into this place of empowerment? And I'd, I'd like to use that as the theme as we go through um, the conversation today, um, but because I think, um, oh, I had to come back into this, do I? I there we go. Never quite sure how to uh, move these slides forward when we're in uh, Zoom. Um, so the best way I can describe that, this is kind of my word, but it, I think it's a word that just sums up the feeling you have when you're in this place where it's, you know, not really very certain what on earth is going on, you know, discombobulation. I think I've spelt it correctly. Uh, there's no red lines under it anyway, but it's that sort of sense, isn't it? Where I don't really understand what's going on around me or, or even within me. Um, because, you know, we may now be living in this place of, of high uncertainty where it's not quite, you know, things that I'd have predicted in the past, you know, I'm not quite sure how that's gonna play out now. Um, you know, some people may not go back to the office for, for still quite a long time. You know, some of the organizations I work with were saying, well, actually, it's probably going to be the end of this year or early next before we get people back into the office on a regular basis again. You know, because, you know, these things are still sort of changing. Um, often what we see when people are hit by a medical diagnosis you know, in, in their life is, well, that actually, it's kind of that, um, you know, it can change perspectives, you know, dramatically. Um, you know, attitudes may change, motivations may change. And I think that's going on with us all at the moment. Um, you know, and we're not quite sure how to, to build on that perhaps. Um, you know, I'm working with people with, with uh, impacted by cancer. Of course, there's big physical changes, big changes in relationships and so, and so forth and so on. So the, all, this, all these changes uh, have a, a, a dramatic in, impact on us and in, almost in our sense of who we are and how we interact with people. Does that make sense to you all? Yeah, it does. It does. It's interesting. Yes, it does. Um, you know, and it's completely normal because we're human. And that's, um, you know, one of the, the most important things to recognize in all this is, you know, this is how we this is how we work. Um, but there's other options we can sort of do as well, um, you know, which is hopefully hopefully to sort of try and move ourselves on so that we can become in a place where we're living our lives to the full. And, um, the, uh, you know, so this is a, 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 a shameless plug for a, a book we've just published in uh, February. And th this is um, a, a book that came from the practice of us volunteers working at this charity supporting people with cancer. 
Um, so just a little bit about, so we work at the, uh, a place called the Fountain Centre in Surrey, which offers support to the Royal um, Surrey, it's changed its name, the Royal Surrey NHS Foundation Trust. Uh, so it's a regional hospitals and it offers um, um, emotional support, uh, personal support to everybody in the hospital impacted by cancer in their area. And we've set up a coaching service there uh, for, for the people. And we've got about seven or eight coaches and we volunteer time to the charity and the charity supports people in the hospital. And we've been going for about five, six, seven years or so. Um, but what we did, because we all work differently to each other. You know, we're all independent practitioners. We've all got our own different trainings and things. <clears throat> and we sort of came together through the way we support each other in supervision and said, okay, what is it we do that's similar? Because we, you know, often we, we think about what we do is, um, it's easy to spot the differences sometimes, isn't it? Rather than the similarities. You know, particularly in professional mm -hmm. practice, because we, you know, professional practice defines us in many ways. You know, this is this is who I am. Um, um, but but actually, we sort of came together through our work and, and really trying to figure out, well, what's the what's the process that we're all doing? And and that's really the the, the essence of 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 what we we um, sort of put into this book. And the three key pillars that we thought were around empowerment. And um, we can go through these in, in, in the next few, uh, 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 you know, today. Uh, but the first one is awareness. So it's good to have that sort of critical awareness of what's going on around me. And, and I use the, the, the term critical, not, a, not to criticize things, but actually to sort of almost not have the judgment, but just be aware of what's really going on. Um, because that's kind of, a, that's a skill in itself, isn't it? To sort of really sort of notice what's actually happening rather than what I think might be happening. Uh, or what I'm not noticing is happening, because that, that's also very human. We're, we're, we're trained to see differences sometimes. Um, information, because there's stuff that might be useful to is that I don't know. And, you know, I don't know what I don't know. Um, and therefore it's how do I find out those boundaries where my knowledge is. And, you know, information is the first step to creating knowledge. Because information, unless you can learn from it, doesn't really create that knowledge for how to move on. Um, so th those are the, 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 the key areas that we sort of thought would be uh, really sort of um, that define how we all operate together in, in terms of creating empowerment. Um, and on the, the next slide, actually, I've just got some definitions of empowerment. So I'd be really interested to hear what, what's empowerment to you. Um, th these are just a couple. So I'll start with the bottom one. Uh, so this is very psychological. Um, you know, it's a gestalt of full cognitions, you know, a sense of meaning, of competence, I've got this type thing, self-determination, which is, um, you know, I'm able to sort of um, be who I am in a really powerful way so that I am uh, navigating things around me and impact. Uh, kind of, that's a bit psychological. The, um, the, the middle one um, comes from a, a, a um, patient empowerment um, perspective, which is, <clears throat> you know, empowerment is a multi-dimensional process that helps people gain control. So it's, it's like I'm taking an active role, irrespective of, you know, what's going on around me. I've got some element of control um, of my own life and increases my capacity to act on issues that are important to me. Yep, I like that one. And, and, and the other one is from an educationalist, which, which we thought was really interesting, actually, because um, empowerment is the practice of freedom. Ooh, that's um, kind of interesting, isn't it? The practice of freedom. Uh, the, me the means by which men and women deal, cr cr it's that critical dealing with reality again, and discover how to participate in the transformation of the world. So um, how do they sound to you? Which one resonates? Do any of them resonate? What's, what's empowerment for you? The middle one, I think for me, between the three, that would be the closest. It's about yep. the, the idea of control <clears throat> over, over, over yourself, over your, your own happiness. Yeah, thanks Luke. Other, I other think thoughts? for me, I think for me, it's the second one as well, but I think part of empowerment for me also means adaptability um, and kind of going with the change that's currently happening because it might not necessarily fit in with our concept of complete freedom, but it's about how you kind of adapt uh, to it and, and yeah. kind of fit your yourself in it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'd also say it's it's uh, how you choose to view something as well. I mean, one of the things we did when we started Outlook uh, 20 years ago was to have, and I keep saying this, a positive outlook on life. You know, um, you know, you may have TS, but so do a lot of other people. It's the way you view it. Just to share a bit of information with you, I've now been given two years. I've been free of. Uh, myeloma which is a type of cancer and i've just been told that i now have the okay from my myeloma doctor to go ahead and get another kidney transplant which is fantastic so you, that to me you, is the best news i could have heard in a very long time and you know it's one of the, now i only got cancer because i i take kidney transplant medication which reduces my immune system so that's not something that's going to happen to everybody with ts but i can view that as being a very positive thing yeah. And I think with anything like this, it's it's how you see things. For me, that is the best news I could have had. Yeah. yeah thank you. Yeah, powerful. Thank you. Other thoughts? No one else speaking. Yeah. Yeah, somebody um, trying to uh, use the microphone. No. So, so it's, it, it's, it's that thing, isn't it, around how do we sort of gain that sense of control over what's happening around us and move forward with that sort of positive intent? Because I think, you know, we've got that sort of positive mindset. It really helps us um, create um, that space where actually things are working for us rather than working against us and you know that's something that uh, hopefully we can sort of um you know build on as, as we go forward and i think that one of the key themes in in, in this as, as we sort of go through the the day what my sort of central message is um, I'd, I'd probably say it differently to a positive mindset but it's really latching on with a very clear intention around what's important to me and you know where i i can sort of um you know make that happen in my world and that uh, uh, of my world around me so it's kind of that you know latching on to that sort of core direction to actually create the and create that sense of control that I have so I've got ability to do something and I'm moving in, in a forward direction so the the, the, the four key areas we, we thought were around this aware um, th th this place were, um, for empowerment was really is that awareness piece um, but there's also something about alignment of my motivation with what's around me. And then there's a kind of choice and there's application of that choice and it's a learning cycle. So, you know, it's and I think that comes on to, um, so I can't remember who said it, but that sense of having to adapt to the environment as it changes around us. Because we have to keep learning to keep on being empowered because things happen around us all the time. And, you know, it might be that the more we feel empowered, yeah the more we're always in that place of creating new beginnings rather than being stuck somewhere in, in those other transition phases, if that makes sense. So um, uh, Luke told me that you um, had an EFT uh, last year. EFT, so yeah. a wonderful, powerful tool um, mm. that we use an awful lot in our practice in the, in the center. Um, and it's always interesting because, you know, I think this, this is a really good one for me to just sort of zone out and, and ground myself. Um, you know, when things are going in, it's great just to, to, you know, a few taps on the karate chop point. Um, but these are some of the elements that we've got in the book. Um, and and what, what I'd like to do is sort of go forward with, with one of the, the core ones that uh, just in terms of, you know, personal leadership, which is that sense of how do I sort of lead myself through change? And it's that sense of taking control over what's happening to me and creating that uh, that direction where I'm managing stuff around me. Um, but that's what we've got in. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, EFT, I'm really, really pleased you, you had some sort of conversation around that last year. So just want to sort of really offer uh, uh, th this construct of personal leadership. Um, so this is kind of the gestalt, you know, the bringing together of four different areas in, into your life. Uh, which is living mindfully, which is that awareness piece. Um, there's something about resilience, and we can come on to about that, but it's more than just bouncing back. It's, it's how do I change? How do I cope? How do I adapt? And that place of self-development and working with those around me um, to, to create the conditions where actually it's, uh, we're working to find win-wins. So this is the, the kind of um, 
sense that I'd sort of like to spend some time just thinking about. Um, does that make sense? How does that sound? Personal leadership. We don't often think about leadership for ourselves, do we? Yeah, I think it's nice and it helps. Um, it, it goes back to control. It shows that to, to, to a certain extent, obviously not completely and utterly, but to a certain extent, it's not necessarily what's happening around us. We can still, we still have the power through through this personal leadership to um, to be in control. One of the questions we often ask people when we're supporting them in the center is, you know, you've got this whole thing, you know, everything's going crazy around me. Um, but actually, just to come back to the moment, which is that living mindfulness piece, but what would be useful at the moment? I mean, uh, you know, that's something I can control. And I can also maybe work on how do I control how I respond to events around me? Yeah. So it's that control and influence piece that becomes so important around this, this leadership model. Yeah. Uh, other thoughts? How does this land? I guess I think again, if I can, I'll talk <laughs> again. But I, uh, what I was thinking there when you when you said that is that again, it's with everything that's 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 going on. It's um, it, it gives you that feeling of power, which is which is nice when when it's so easy to to feel like you don't have any. Um, that's especially in, in the TSC community for so many people who've been shielding, for example, yeah. um, I'm feeling like there is no power. It, 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 uh, I'm, I can see how that would help a lot. Mm. Yeah, that's going to be good right now. Yeah. Mm. I, I'm very pleased to see that working together is part of it. Because if we, if we do all this as individuals and stay as an isolated individual, it's going to restrict what we've learned and what we've changed. We live in community. Totally. We're here in community today, but we're all in many different communities. And, and that's really important. And oh, it's a bit grand, but in terms of say society moving forward at the end of all this, whatever it is, or near the end, we need to harness these skills in terms of working together. Um, and I think that's just really important. So I'm really pleased to see that as um, a quarter of the um, <laughs> yeah. of the um, circle. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Thank I, you. I really like that, Janet. I yeah, really I like, like that. that. It, it's a big chunk of pie, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And and it's interesting because we, we tend to think you know in in very individualistic societies and the societies that are more. Um, together, shall we say, or more harmonious. We're, nobody lives on, uh, alone, uh, you know, we're, no. we're all, and it's such an important part of our lives about how we connect with other people. Yeah. You know, and, and bringing that to attention can be really powerful as well, because sometimes our relationships change, but how do we keep them in a way that's useful for both of us is, is a really important part. So what I'd like to do next is just sort of touch on each of these these um, bits of pizza or bits of pie, uh, depending on your preference, um, just to sort of in, put a, a, just to in delve a little bit more into them and maybe sort of share some things that might be helpful um, and just perspectives. So living mindfully. Um, does anybody have a meditation practice? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I do. Brilliant. And what, what sort of meditation do you do, you do Andrea? Um, I do um, I do a, a morning um, sort of gratitude meditation. Um, I've, uh, I've been part of a yoga um, sort yeah. of practice for six years. And because I was shielding um, at the very beginning of shielding um, and being very isolated, uh, I found it really, really difficult for the first few months. And then I started to um, look on different, you know, YouTube channels. And then I eventually um, found different meditation. So there's, um, there's a gratitude meditation. There's something called Tonglen. There's um, ni Yoga Nidra, which yep. is probably, sleep, I, isn't it? I don't know whether people know about that. That's a very relaxing meditation. 
So I've found those invaluable. I, I tried to in yoga nidra, I just fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. That's, that's a positive. Good. That's, that's the result. <laughs> I think that's how it developed was a sleep aid, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, other, others, anybody else do um, a meditation exercise or yoga or qigong or horse riding, swimming? I think yeah. there's an there's there's an Outlook member who's not here today who does Tai Chi. Yeah, I know she does a lot of Tai Chi. And, and I think it's kind of it's just creating that space where you can sort of step out of that busy hamster wheel that we all live in. You know, and and, yeah. and I think the more the, the we're, we're able to do that, the more we can sort of open our senses and and see you know and and help us build that critical reality around us. Because you know, uh, you know, sometimes our, our, our awareness shrinks to um, you know to to the, the the troubles or the stress or the stuff I need to do uh, for some reason. But without finding that sort of depth and just that connection to space, uh, we get yeah. swept away with these things, and then we're not really making choices anymore, are we? We're becoming more on automatic. Yeah. Yes. Can I can I, can I just say I think there's a lot of um, sort of. Uh, bad press if you like um and you know me I, I i was guilty of it before i started to meditate i think people think it, it's this just sort of this wonderful thing where you just sit and you say om and it's you know you you're just going to be transported it's not an easy thing to do but and you know even after years and years of of people doing it they still say it's difficult but even a few minutes or just closing and relaxing and just being quiet is really beneficial. So it doesn't have to be this sort of going off on a retreat or anything like that. It, it can be so beneficial and just a very you know calming, relaxing thing. And you don't even realize you know, the benefit that you get from it, um, you know, until you know until you've tried it wonderful thank you so much it's just that space isn't it just to de-stress and, and tune in and what, what i was going to suggest was perhaps we could try one now with everyone it's yeah. a very very quick meditation um or uh, if, uh, uh, if and if meditation isn't the, the the right thing for you maybe a breathing exercise if we call it that <clears throat> um so if that if that's okay so what i'm going to ask you to do is just Count your breaths for a moment, for, for a minute, for a moment, for a minute. Um, and so if you can sit up um, or, or lay down, however you are, just being comfortable. Um, and, you know, both feet on the floor if you can, or just connect yourself to the ground. And, you know, it's kind of that earthing or grounding thing that people talk about. And eyes open or, or eyes closed, whatever's good for you. But just tune in and bring all your attention to your breathing. Just noticing breathing in, maybe through the nose, breathing out through the, through the mouth and just finding the rhythm. So every breath in and out is one breath. And just from now, just counting your breaths for a minute. I'll keep track of time. And keeping all your attention on the breath. And if and when your mind wanders, just bringing it back to the breath. Keeping your attention to the breath. And that's a minute. How many breaths? Eight. Eight. Nine. Nine. Eleven. Eleven. Don't know. Twelve. <laughs> uh, ten. Anybody fall asleep? <laughs>
I'm always I'm always suddenly aware of how much I slouch whenever I have to do something <laughs> like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's when you start to dribble, that's when you need to really worry. <laughs> <laughs> how how do you feel? Relaxed. Calmer. Yeah, definitely. It's about 10 breaths and it can have that, just that moment just can, you know, have an effect on your physiology and how you feel. And so, you know, just building those practices into a day to day routine, even if it's just, you know, just taking a time for a couple of uh, minutes each day, just to sort of just tune into the breath. And there's lots of exercises and things that you can find online that really help you. But it, th these are really powerful exercises just like EFT, you know, so, um, you know, even just tapping on the cutty chop point, the most spoken about, this is one of the repolarization um, um, meridians or, or pressure points that they would talk about. So this helps energy flow in the way it should flow. Um, you know, just take a moment, breathe through it, breathe into it. There's lots of experience, uh, lots of different practices that we can build, um, but it's kind of amazing, isn't it? 10 breaths, feels a bit calmer you know that's a real that's that is control isn't it you're controlling how you feel yeah. how do I move on so um the, the thing I'd like to add to this as well is about that sense about living mindful is also about having a presence now I, I work with people in organizations and we often talk about leadership presence uh, but having a presence you know in terms of you know uh, is is really that thing that happens um, when we're really aware of what's going on in our body, you know, so I can take that time out just when I need it. I've got some level of adaptability, but I've got a direction in which I'm heading. You know, that intention is so key because that creates the force behind where we go with our actions and our attitudes. And uh, I'm going to sort of come back to this point over the, of, uh, you know, in the discussion time and time again now, but that intention and motivation can be like our North Star, which helps us guide us through and creating that sense of empowerment and action. And if I'm always heading towards that star, I've got some control, haven't I? Isn't that a wonderful place to be? You know, and if I can't get this way, I can maybe change and come a different way to it and see how I can get there. Um, oh, so any questions on that? I, I just want to touch on resilience because um, learning mindfully, you know, big part of the pie. Um, and, it, this, and, and it's called a mindful practice for different, for, for that very reason. It's something that you, you never really get the t-shirt. There's always more to learn. Um, and actually the more you practice, the more easier it is to do these things. So it's kind of one of those things, which is, you know, train hard, play easy. So the more I'm able to to practice living mindfully, then the more I'm able to adapt and cope with what's going on around me, which really fits into this whole concept of resilience. And, you know, re resilience is, is one of those things as well that's very popular in, in the press and in the media. And often we talk about it as being the bounce back. You know, it's about bouncing back. Um, but actually, if you start, I was trying to find a picture of a trees um, because I think trees do this so well, don't they? You know, strong trees are the ones that bend in the wind. Um, because they go and they go with the flow, but sometimes they need to withstand and you know resist the gale. Um, but often they reconfigure, they adapt, they change, the structure changes depending on where they're growing. You know, and you particularly see that and you know in trees on, on cliffs and, and such. So you know, resilience has these three core elements, which is always good to think about how you know what type of resilience do I need to show here then? Um, you know, is it bouncing back? Is it, you know, that, that hanging on to get through things, which I think a lot of us were doing at the moment in, in the pandemic. Um, it's let me, let me just get through this and then I'll worry about everything else later on. That's kind of that resistance place. Um, but also that reconfiguration. And, you know, that's also an important part of, you know, a, um, you know leading for yourself. Uh, and a, a really important part of this, I, I was going to suggest, is really um, uh, so much work has been done in this area around a sense of coherence. And uh, you know, those of us who, are, who can develop our sense of coherence and that place of <clears throat> understanding where I am in the world helps me adapt to all the changes and all the challenges that are being thrown at me. Uh, and actually, um, uh, um, 
So was it Andrea? Uh, I can't remember. Uh, somebody said it was about um, the positive attitude, you know, just to, having that mindset and the attitude to get through. Um, I, I'm going to break it down a little bit even further here. So it's the positive mindset and the attitude around meaning. So I'm finding meaning in my situation. I've got that intention, that North Star. I'm really working towards it. <clears throat> and I believe I can manage my situation and I believe I understand where I fit in it. So, you know, believing where you fit, where you fit into a, a circumstance gives you that sense of control. Even if you don't have that much, you might be able to influence it in some way. And, um, you know, I think people often talk about Nelson Mandela uh, when he was locked away on Robbins Island um, for all those years. Um, he, he started growing plants, I think was the, the story I heard. And, and again, I don't know if this is true, but it's like an urban myth. Um, but he understood he didn't have his freedom, but he found freedom in another way. So he understood where he fitted. This is such a powerful tool to think about how do we bring these elements into our lives, particularly around me, you know, meaning and, and um, uh, motivation. Um, you know, and, and so what, you know, what's important in our lives? What brings this, this sense of me of being able to adapt and control? Well, you know, it might be nature, it might be the environment that is, is really, really important to us. It could be friends and family. Uh, it could be societal. It could be, you know, actually, how do we create a difference for others um, to support people, you know, go through similar changes and, and such, whatever it is for you, um, you know, it might be really important. Um, I'm working with one individual at the moment who is very, very passionate about uh, football and, um, you know, teaching kids to, um, you know, and coaching them in football <clears throat> is one of the, you know, it's that, that's one of the reasons that this person gets out of bed in the morning. Really passionate about it. How wonderful is that to have that in your life? It could also be beauty, art, music, you know, whatever it is, these things bring, bring a real joy to us. <clears throat> and I, I don't know if you've um, come across the positive psychology strengths, um, but I encourage you to have a look in the veercharacters.org if you're interested in, in doing a little bit of self-awareness and self-development, um, because that, that, uh, um, that's a free um, uh, evaluation of where your strengths are. And these strengths can be flexed and they can be built. And sometimes we don't know what our strengths really are. So it's a really interesting exercise um, to, to go through and say, well, this is what I'm really good at. How can I work with this in a different way to help me get through the change that's going on around me? Um, and these strengths, they, they've um, <clears throat> sort of um, made them all into different sort of virtues or themes. And these are the strengths that help us get through stuff. You know, this this um, virtue of transcendence. So it's interesting because, you know, gratitude, you know, living my life with gratitude and being thankful for what I've got really helps me sort of adapt and cope with what's going on around me. <clears throat> humour, although I always tell my uh, colleagues, be very careful with humour because it's a very individual thing. Um, but, you know, having a bit of, of a laugh and a bit of fun is something that helps us get through things. Hope, spirituality. These are all elements that we can build and, and find ways to sort of um, help us transform ourselves beyond this next um, lockdown. Uh, and, and, and I'll just pause there a moment. So questions, thoughts, how does this sound? I think humour is really powerful, but as you said, it's so um, personal okay. as well. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, thanks, Luke. Other thoughts? Does this resonate? It does definitely resonate. It definitely resonates with me, as you said about with your um, yeah, your client who. Oh, sorry, go on, Andrew. No, no, it definitely resonates with me as well. Obviously, because of what I've recently spoken about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And and you know what's really nice about coming to talk about these things with, with folks is that this is all stuff we sort of know, isn't it? Um, yeah. And it's certainly something my mother would have told me and been amazed that this is now my profession. Um, but the, 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 the trick with all these things is, is that knowing isn't always enough um, mm -hmm. because actually it's how to build this into our way in which we're working and how we're living our lives. That's, that's the practice that we need to keep on building. And I think these frameworks can be really helpful for that. Just gives us that bit of orientation about making it real, uh, if that makes sense. I do wonder sometimes if the appreciation of beauty may have changed over the generations. You know, yeah. I still like walking in nature or walking barefoot in the grass. 
Whereas I think, you know, quite often a lot of young children these days don't play out inside in the grass and, you know, they are all screens, that sort of thing. And you, you can lose the appreciation of the basics sometimes. Yeah. And, well, and, and it's going to be different for different people and different, you know, ages and different constraints and, and such. Um, and, and I think that's the really important part, isn't it? Because it's what it is for me. That's the most important thing. Yeah, um, I think it's because because it's unique and it's personal and it's yeah. free. Oh, yeah. It doesn't cost anything. And isn't that good? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's the old saying? Beauty's in the eye of the beholder, isn't it? Exactly. You know, to, to find, find, you know, and really appreciating that beauty for what it is, whether it's walking in the, you know, in the grass. I love to do that as well, actually. Um, and, and, you know, and I'm not sure my kids would, you know, that's the, and uh, so, so it's finding what's, what's good for ourselves. Definitely. So self-leadership, this is a really interesting one in terms of this concept of personal leadership. This is, you know, um, a process of reflection that enables me to sort of adapt and motivate myself to make changes. Um, and it, 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 you know, a central part of this is really when we're finding our place in, in things that we stuff where maybe we, we don't really want to do. Um, you know, and there's, it's finding what they called um, the natural rewards. So a natural reward is one of those things that we want to do or even like to do rather than something we should do or could do because somebody expects me to do it. And, and so it's, you know, and I used to work with colleagues of mine who, who, who um, you know, in, 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 uh, in the business world were, were given tasks that sometimes they really didn't want to do. Um, but actually finding out that bit that just resonated with, you know, what you appreciated or what the passion was, the understanding what the beauty was, that created that motivation to go and do it. It, sometimes those barriers those just fall away if I can really focus on appreciating what I'm getting from it or what might be the benefit of doing this for others. So it's finding those natural rewards. And think about useful behaviours. Um, you know, so this is kind of, a, 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 you know, what would be useful for me right now? You know, um, taking uh, time just to count my best for a minute, set the timer. That's a useful behaviour because it, it enables me to ground um you know spending some time to do some eft or supporting somebody else to do some eft very useful behavior just to ground and move on and then you know different strategies to sort of think about well how do i sort of tune into useful thoughts and feelings that are going to be useful for me to sort of uh, adapt and negotiate what's happening around me um yeah does anybody do this that now i've sort of said it in that way i, I would imagine that m most of us have these practices, but we don't probably think of them in these ways. I do try and be more aware of things, especially over the last year or so, and trying to think of the, yeah, I do try to, to take a deep breath and sort of, I can't even think of the word, but like anchor yourself or yeah. rather than just like rushing through <laughs> the day. But um, Tony said it's far too much of human doing rather than human being. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. My, my best breath of the day is the one I take when I step outside the door first thing in the morning. Mm. And that is wonderful. And the whole thing about trees resonated. Having moved to an area where there's a lot of very old woodland, I find my appreciation of trees for all the things that have been mentioned has really, really leapt up. Uh, from what it used to be. Not that I didn't like them, but <laughs> it's, yeah. become more, it's become more valuable. It, it, and, and that's such a mindful practice, it's noticing on purpose. Yeah. And what a great mm. thing to bring into our lives, eh, when we can really notice and on purpose and, and sense that appreciation. It's, I uh, think certainly working from home, um, you know, you can get caught up in the, the whole work from home thing the only time I can really think creatively is if I just get out for a walk in, in, in the park and you know so forget about listening to anything I don't want to hear anything anymore I like you say um Janet it's almost just like we're looking at the trees and yeah. you know just shut off from, from everything else and you can just just get back to yourself again but that's the only time you can really get creative because there's nothing else bugging you you know yeah. so it's great I, li I literally took up a um a hobby with uh, take going out with my my camera at the moment. 
So um, we've won me and dad went up to like Gar Lakes and literally the picture we've got right here, it just, it's, it's beautiful. We literally just sitting there and paint and whatnot. Brilliant, thank you. Yeah, is, is it so good just to sort of be out there and notice these things? It's it, it's just great. It's a real energy boost, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, mm. when we went up to like Tintin Abbey last, last week and you just take a deep breath and just look at the at the surroundings and whatnot. And obviously it's like getting deep breath as well and fresh air, getting yourself fresh air. Like I've been shielding since last Oh God, last year. And then I came out of S.H.I.E.L.D. then and I went back to work. And then I um, I took the voluntary redundancy in November and I've been, I haven't had a job since, but I've had, um, I've done my special educational needs course as well and passed that. And I got, I'm hoping to get um, some teaching in uh, with new directions. So, you know, That's awesome. that. So. Thank you. And, and, and just to reflect, you know, what I'm hearing here is, is building these strategies into our lives. And then that really enables us to make those choices and, and have that control because we're actually interacting with our environment when we do these things. So it, it sounds brilliant. Thank you. It's a couple of people with their hands up. So I'm trying to find out your names. Luke, we have to help me. Uh, Katie, do you want to go, go first and then we'll, we'll have Meg afterwards? I was just going to say that I, I try and do some gratitude type stuff or um, as well as like noticing. Um, I realized the other day because I was I've been singing at some of the local nursing homes just to like do some entertainment for free to kind of cheer people up a bit. And somebody was mowing the lawn with a two stroke lawnmower. And I realized how much the smell just brought back so many memories of you know people like past kind of you know summers and stuff like that and so yeah I use I, I um for me memories are a big thing because I don't have um, a lot of memories of, of being a child anyway so sometimes and, and I think we all know that the sense of smell is a really big trigger for memories so um yeah it was quite quite it's quite was quite powerful so yeah gratitude type of stuff you know kind of thinking oh I'm you know grateful for the memory of you know stuff in the past from like different things so yeah thank you yeah I get that as well uh, Megan do you want to go it's amazing hearing everybody's um self-reflection processes but I think sometimes self-reflection can also be quite challenging um, and I think it's you know I mean I'm speaking for myself here and sometimes you think that you are very reflective but you don't realize whether you're being reflective or not if you, if you get what I mean um, and I think one of the things that kind of brings all these together is connection so being talking to people um, and I think that's really important as well sometimes you we are so invested emotionally in all those personal issues professional issues we forget to take a few moments for ourselves and I think sometimes there's also a denial that no I don't need it I'm, I'm fine I can deal with it I'm, I'm able to do it and that sort of thing and sometimes you just need somebody to kind of rein you back a little bit and say no you do need to think about it you do need to reflect about it you might not be able to do it there and then as expected and that was my very recent experience and I thought you know no, I don't need to do that I'm fine but then when you kind of sit down and think about it that's when you kind of think I do need to have a different perspective on things I do need to adopt and you do need to change so I think it's important to re realize that sometimes you do need that support network to kind of bring that about for you and that's fine and you might not always be ready for reflection there and then as well because I think sometimes that can be a big challenge for people when they start to think oh I'm not I'm not reflecting something's not right why am I not thinking about it in a different perspective so I think it's great if you can do it but even if you if there are moments when you're really struggling to reflect it's about giving yourself time and I think connection is really important. Connection in the sense of having the right support networks, people you can talk to. And I think that's also another reason our support line is there. Sometimes it gives people that chance to look at things very differently and you can go away, reflect on it and 
we find that a few of people who have contacted us in the support line, I think just being able to talk about it is good. Thank you, Megan. I think you've just described my professional role. Because <laughs> 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 actually having somebody to, to be there and witness your reflection and support you can be really powerful. Um, and, I, and I once went to a, a talk by a very, very famous psychologist whose name has completely gone off the top of my head, uh, but was one of the people who was involved in all these human factors and these, you know, normal ways in which we work. And the, 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 the chap was saying, you know, I've been researching this for 50 years or 40 years, whatever it was. Um, I do every one of these every day <laughs> still, um, because actually it's working with other people that helped me get out of my, um, you know, uh, you know, the, the um, habitual or the automatic ways of thinking. And, and sounds I think like that, a lot of the, a lot of forgiveness needs to be involved. Yeah. Self forgiveness. Self forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Um, because actually we're all just human. We're all doing our, our, our stuff. And, you know, this is just the human, um, the, 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 this just human, isn't it? You know, this is, you know, we're all trying to sort of do, but actually our, our challenge is to be. And, you know, and, and, and thank you, Megan, you've just brought us lovely on to the next part of the, the piece of the pie as well. Um, because I think working together is so important in this, because if you've got the right support mechanisms around you and the right support network around you, they can help you create that space to reflect. Um, because somebody can give you some feedback if you if that's the way you're operating. Um, but it's uh, and I think this is an old African proverb, isn't it? I can't, I'm quite sure where it goes from, but it, a lot of people use it. You know, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. You know, it's that uh, ability to share and create those win-win um, uh, relationships that are, are so important for sustainable and long-term growth. Um, and, you know, and that, that's kind of an interesting place in society today, isn't it? Because actually, um, you know, a lot of, of how we operate is on the short-termism. Um, but actually thinking out things for that win-win, um, you know, setting alignment around those uh, amongst us all, around goals, motivations, intentions, it uh, doesn't need to be exact, but perhaps it just needs to be understanding where the overlap is. How can we create that win-win that's good for both of us or for more than both of us? And how do we gather the resources for us to move forward together? Be really important. And, and I think all this, so that's really just a very quick look around, you know, this whole idea of well, what's personal leadership. But it's all about learning as well. Um, because, you know, we can learn stuff. I can learn, um, you know, how to ride a bike. I can learn how to do this. I can learn uh, how to you know, work in a certain way. But sometimes we really need to sort of transform the way we think about ourselves and the situation in which we find ourselves. Um, you know, so this is this transformative or this, you know, transcendent learning. And people, some people call this double loop learning um, because it's actually that space of reflection again around and this is what it means to me. So I can learn how to do stuff and uh, you know, and it, I'm not really bringing me into this, I'm just doing it because I might need to, and it could be um, you know, you know, you know, learning um, a, a process or you know, how to cook something or how to, to, to do X, Y, Z. But if I'm gonna sort of learn about how do I operate in a different way, it, it really means that you're going to have to sort of have a reflection and a challenge around some of these things from the self-leadership perspective around, well, what's really important to me? You know, what's, what, what, how do I get motivation in this? Um, you know, who am I in this? What do I really value? What's important to me? What do I believe is going to be um, helpful to me or not helpful to me? Uh, has anybody seen Bridge of Spies? Um, Tom, Tom Hanks film. Yeah. yeah. And Jonathan, what was the name of the other chap again? He's a really good actor. Mark, he? Um, Mark something. Was it? Mark something, <laughs> him. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> from um, Paul, it, yeah. He had a line in that because I think that, that the story is I think Tom Hanks is um, CIA um, guy, isn't he? And, and Mark someone is the Russian agent who is who has been trialed and who's going to be, um, you know, um, shot at dawn or something or other. And his buzz line all the way through the the, uh, uh, the movie is, would it be useful if I was to feel that way? You know, so he's sort of, you know, really sort of taking that space out around, um, you know, the values and beliefs around what was important to me. It was just actually being okay in the moment. Such an important, powerful piece around managing change and you know, being empowered 
taking control of that um, uh, action around us. So I realised we're sort of running out of time, um, but um, th 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 this is the one that really resonates with me, the practice of freedom. Um, although, um, and for me, freedom is, is when I'm making an active participation. I may not be totally free, but actually I'm creating my sense of freedom when I'm taking control, you know, in that second position, you know, I'm taking control over things that are important to me. That, that to me sort of resonates as freedom. I, and I'm, you know, not quite sure where that is for you guys. Um, but if we can live in that empowered way, then we're always in that place of creating new beginnings because we're always acting in, uh, dynamically with what's around us. Um, might be sort of an interesting place just to end because um, the, 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 um, the, 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 the science around this is, you know, years and years and years and years. But um, um, about 2008, um, th these five elements of um, behaviours have been sort of uh, <clears throat> really identified of being the things. These are the things that help us stay well. So if we're always in a place where we're learning something, we're connected and got meaningful relationships with people around us um, or with nature or whatever it is. You know, that's a really important part of being well. Being active physically um, may not mean um, uh, running marathons or something along those lines, but actually just take going for a walk and, and do it on a regular basis or, or help us stay well. This place of noticing um, and noticing mindfully these, these quick um, simple meditations that we can do that just to help us ground, it could be EFT, whatever it might be, just noticing what's going on around us helps us be that human being rather than the human being. Really powerful tool for being well. And actually another really powerful tool for, for being well is giving. It comes back into that place of society again, actually. Um, mm -hmm. You know, just, you know, it just feels really powerful just to give something to somebody, doesn't it? It's just um, a nice thing to do. But it's also good for me. Mm. Um, you know, so these are the five elements of of well-being, and if we can bring those into our lives on a day-to-day -day basis, um, then it might be interesting just to have a feeling about well, how do I feel today? You know, how's it going? Am I am I sort of feeling better, or feeling well, feeling in control? And um, you know, if all else fails, I'd suggest this is always a good intention to bring into your day on a day-to-day -day basis. How do I get my five mental foods? or three of my five mental foods. Um, and then there's just some questions here to think about, about um, how to build that into a, a, a practice. Because <clears throat> sometimes the more we can be specific about these things, it removes those barriers to making it happen in our lives. And we're five to three. Um, and I think we'll probably just leave it there, but bring in a special thank you to a couple of people. So Sue Jackson and Jackie Arnold were, uh, as the publisher said, uh, the curating authors. So we, the, we were the editors of, of, of the team who brought all this to go, together. <coughs> um, but we also wrote in the book as well. Sue and I have been working in this area for a long, long time now uh, and really appreciate um, all our contributions. And um, also to my other colleagues who have been in, involved in writing the book and also the, the team and staff and clients at the Fountain Centre, who've really been the, the stimulus for putting our thoughts together in this area. And with that, I'd, I'd just like to close and, and any, any other questions before, before we break? I guess the, the, the underlying thing for me from everything that we went through is how, it, a, a lot of it is so simple where it's just being mind, mindful about it and being aware of it, isn't it? Once you, once you have the tools and you have it sort of the, the, the seed planted, then much, much of it is very, very easy to do. Or, or in, in, in theory, I suppose, in practice, that's the yeah. difficult thing, isn't it? It's, it's, it's having the, the, um, the, the openness and the, um, the the desire to to get it in into <clears throat> the yeah it's not rocket yeah. science as they say mm -hmm. i think i think it's find it's finding something that works for you as well you know you you hear about somebody does one thing somebody does something else somebody paints somebody sings somebody loves music someone goes for a walk somebody goes for a run i think you have to find what works for you and don't beat yourself up and be hard on yourself if you find that you try something and it doesn't work for you. Obviously, yeah. you have to 
found what works for you and it's finding mm -hmm. the, the thing that helps you to become empowered and to relax and to enjoy and appreciate yourself as well as everybody else thank you no it is and and if it doesn't work well that's great because you cross one off yeah <laughs> Other thoughts? It's important to remember as well that it's kind of like, even though giving is a big element of it, that you can't pour from an empty cup, so to speak. So yeah, just rem remembering that although giving is important, all of the other elements contribute as well. Yeah, yeah. totally. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll just say a big, um, a big thank you, Andrew. That was that was excellent. Um, I'm so so glad that we've we recorded it as well. Um, so I can so I can give it another rewatch and really really uh, make sure it all sinks in sinks in nicely. So so that was great and, and lots of um, lots of things that we can really bring in bring into a lot our lives. I'm sure.